welcome to my channel. <clears throat> well, this is um, a response to an open tag that Patty's potato peelers put up. And uh, if I understand it correctly, see, that's the thing. The, the best way to answer something is if you understand the question properly. And, and the way he phrased it when I was watching the video was, what knife gets your juices flowing? Well, the knife that got my juices flowing is this knife right here because it cut my blood, which, are, which is my juices. It cut my finger to the bone. See that little scar there? So, this guy got my juices flowing. It's just a little Rough Rider cub lockback that you don't want to ask, underestimate and say, oh, it's just a little tiny knife. It won't do nothing. Yeah, it'll do something if you give it a chance. But I believe what he was meaning was more like aroused. And knives don't really arouse me in a sexual way. But as far as a passion... That's probably more what he was trying to do, what he was trying to... That's the way I'm going to answer this one. Let's put it that way. On the, on the ones, what gets my juices flowing, I think I answered that with the cub lockback right there. You know, uh-oh, I changed the intensity. Just see, that's touching that thing over there. So, yeah. That would be the one. And then I have to find all the knives that ever cut me. And man, I get cut by my knives quite a bit. Now, as far as the other way, which ones give you the, the most pleasure when you're picking it up? The, the ones that you enjoy the most. I that's, think that's the way I'm going to interpret it. So we'll start over here on the left. They're not all expensive knives. And one of them I have in my lap that I have to show you. But uh, we'll start off with my very first GEC. This one was given to me. And that, that makes it special. But it was also my very first farm and field bullnose. Even if you get a used GEC or a given GEC, it's still a GEC, you know? It's still made well. These are like their uh, synthetic handled ones. But man, you talk about a work knife. And at the time I had been talking about, uh, I, ha I had no GEC knives. And everybody was talking about, if you're into traditional knives, you need to get a GEC. And I was thinking, well, you know, with, with flipper knives, I was looking at buying knives costing $100. So, you know, I could, these at the time were, I think they still are not as hard to find when they come out, but this was I was I got into I got into wanting GEC knives right at the beginning of when they started becoming hard to get. They weren't completely there yet. But anyways, I've been talking about it on my channel and uh a subscriber that I know and everything said uh oh you want a gc i'll send you one I'm like what I'm like oh yeah, yeah sure i'll send it in the mail and i'm like oh, thanks you know and i didn't i didn't expect it you know to net i didn't not that i don't trust people when they say things or anything you know but i it just i didn't think someone would send me uh, a good knife you know like that but uh when it arrived, I was like, wow, these are great. So after that, so, th so this one, this one is special to me. This, you know, like, gets my juices flow. This, like, brings fond memories to me of, of uh, how people can give up something valuable to someone else. You know, like, gift giving. You know, it's like, here, here you go. And it, it makes you appreciate things like that. Well, after that, I said, all right. It's nice to be given one as a gift, but I'm going to buy one 
you know. I mean, and he sent the whole tube and everything else, you know. I mean, so I had the the GEC um, experience, you know. Here's he sent us with it and everything, you know. And Orange Delrin. See, this one's actually Delrin. This video might be a little bit long for those of you that um, don't realize this yet, because that's why I was trying to narrow it down because. Knives that make me happy and everything, man, all my knives, usually every knife, make me happy in some way or another, or I wouldn't have bought them, you know? <laughs> but, uh, and back to the GEC story. So, there were certain models of GEC knives that were coming out at the time. This was a couple, few years ago. And uh, people didn't like them, or they weren't snagging them up, and so dealers would have them available. You know, um, you could get them. They, they wouldn't sell out within, you know, like, you'd look at it one day, you come back a week later, and they'd still have some available. That's how available they were, you know. And so my next knife was not on here, but I purchased another GC, a 97, uh, a PPP, not a Patty's Potato Peelers, but, uh, you know, the, what is it, Precision? I don't remember. Like I said, I'm I'm not super into knowing everything about GECs or chasing or everything. But then, this one is the one that I like a lot, I carry a lot, I enjoy a lot. It gets me to um, enjoy a, a larger size toothpick. Because I like the little toothpicks, but as far as carrying, you know, like the super long toothpicks... It's like you're getting too long to not have some kind of a locking device, you know. And the medium-sized ones, I hadn't really experienced that much, but these were available. What is this guy's number? It's the number 12. And my only mistake that I made with this knife is I stored it in one of those Rough Rider uh, slips when they first came out. I didn't know that it would tarnish the bolsters. And man, I pulled this out. Now, I haven't polished it up as much as I can. I've got the ability. I've got, I just put some case paste on it and stuff and shined it up. But um, I use this. I carry it and use it. And every time I, I carry it and, and I use it, I when I pull it out, just the craftsmanship of it. Now, it's, it, it's now, you know, these things are becoming, you know, rare as hen's teeth and stuff. And to get it, you have to know somebody who knows somebody and be on a special list. It's like a speakeasy or something. You do a special knock and you're allowed to come in. And then you've got to do a special handshake. And then we might allow you to purchase the knife. I'm sorry. I'm too old to play those games, man. If you've got a knife and it's for sale, then I'll buy it. But if it sells out immediately and then on the, the only way you can get it is on the secondary market or you had to be on some special list or, you know, all the rituals you got to go through, forget it. I don't care how well the knife is made. I'm not going to go through all that crap. So after that, this is my last GEC. I've got three of them. I'm perfectly happy. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't get the GEC bug. You know, I love a bunch of different patterns. And from that, I guess we'll have to move this around because... One of the GEC patterns that I later on thought, wow, man, that is really nice. I'd like to get was the number 47 Viper in any iteration. They had a bunch of different ones. And I didn't have the money at the time. <clears throat> and those things, too, were, were selling out quickly. I mean, they, weren't, they wouldn't sit there for a day or so on a dealer's shelf. You know, they'd be gone. And people were buying them up in bulk because they knew, you know, I can buy one for myself. And one to sell, and I can double my profit and basically get one for free. You know, and people, what's going to stop people from doing that? Nothing. And that's what happens, you know, when you've got limited availability, supply and demand. The price goes up. If the demand is high and the supply is low, boom. They can charge almost anything they want for it, unless it's some regulated thing like food. Or... But anyways, getting back to that. So... I wanted something like a GEC 47, but affordable, that I could use. And at the time, Rough Rider had sold out of their, this is the second model, the, the blue denim one. And I, and I modified it. I scraped 
off the scales. To give, I wanted to see what was in, underneath it because this is so polished. This micarta is so polished. It feels smooth. <clears throat> and I wanted to see, yeah, that there is denim material underneath there. I got carried away with it. But it's a user, not a looker. And that's what makes me smile about this. A couple of uh, mistakes that I made, you know, and this side looks better. But uh, then I'm able to get a knife and I didn't have to do anything super special or dance, you know, or, or know the handshake or the special whistle, the bird call that you had to do. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. You know, if you do that, then they'll let you into the GEC club. <clears throat> I liked it so much. Now, see, this one, like I said, it wasn't available, but when it finally was available, I got one. And I liked it so much, after screwing this one up, I said, well, let me just get a looker. So, even though this is an inexpensive knife, it just makes me happy that I didn't... You get the same cutting, basically. You're just paying for a lot of it on GC. I think you're paying for the hype, the name, the rarity, you know. <clears throat> all these things that doesn't affect cutting ability or, you know, functionality. All these other things, it's like advertising. You're paying extra for that. So, enjoy them if you've got them and everything. But my advice would be, don't go in saying, going through that stuff, unless you like to do it. You know, it's like part of the hunt. All right, here's another one. It's just a plain, you know, it's not a plain one. This is the S35VN um, version, but the Civivi Elementum. I, at the time, I was into the, you know, the flipper craze, and Civivi, as n normal, as Civivi does, would come out with one good model after another. But this was back when the Elementum was not available, and I had the... The blue handled one, I finally got that one. It was like 50 bucks D2, but it had a weak detent. And that's you know, kind of like unheard of in Civivi land that you would get a weak detent. But I could make it fail. And this one I haven't been able to make fail unless it gets super dirty. But uh, when I'm taking mine apart on the other one, there was a dent, like a Rockwell hardness dent in the detent ball track for the, for the flipper. So no amount of oil, I even tried sanding it, no amount of buffing or sanding that I did. You know, it's D2, it's not easy to, to buff that stuff out. Would get that little bump out. So any momentum that you had going, if it was going already kind of, it already had a weak detent, it would just stop. And as you know with flippers, there's nothing worse than a half-deployed flipper. You know, the limp flimp. Limp, the limp flip. Try saying that. I tried and I failed. <clears throat> what I like about this knife is it stopped me from chasing flippers. I stopped, I stopped doing that. I said, all right, this is good enough for me. I don't need these anymore. Let me go back to traditionals, which I kind of skipped over most of my life, and see what they're like, you know. Start collecting the patterns. That's when I got into the Rough Riders and started you know, collecting a bunch of different traditional knives. I still have flippers. I still like them. And this one I even rotate out now because I carry it so much, you know. Yeah, why? Why? If you found a good thing, why flip to something else? It's because I, I've got so much variety, man. I mean, it is a good knife, but it's kind of like... Anyways, it was, it was hard... I carried for years, man. It was my main... You asked me, what's your easy... It'd be easy to answer. Civivi Elementum. Civivi Elementum. If you want to get specific, it's the one with my card handles and S35BN. But Civivi Elementum. Um, that one, like I said, stopped me from chasing flippers anymore. So that one puts... That one... It, it hasn't cut me as far as like, my juice is flowing. But uh, I do enjoy the quality and workmanship of a good knife or the practicality of it no matter what the cost is but i can appreciate good workmanship too and rarity you know so i i appreciate all aspects of that here's another one this is a clasp knife i've i wanted this and and passed it by and everything because of the 
mainly because of the blade edge. Most of my knives I want to want to be as workers, but this knife, it's so enjoyable to hold. It, it is a class knife, you know, it's not a super expensive one. I think they're usually like $25. Toby and family sent me this one. And when I open it up, it comes in a nice little gift box. But I had a little story, you know, about the deer and the hunter and all that other stuff, you know. It just, it's just enjoyable, you know, even if it didn't have that etch on there. And yeah, it's made in China. Yeah, go ahead and hate it for that. Deer tracks on there, you know, a little embellishing. It's a cool knife. It's a big knife, too. If you want to use it, it can do anything a big knife would do. But if you're going to do any thrusting or stabbing, you know, just remember, it's a, it's still a slip joint. It can fold on you. And a big blade like this doesn't have a real... It's got a good lockup. But let's check the... Let's see if it's a guillotine. Man, see the mass of this blade. It doesn't have to be moving real fast. And that's a strong spring. I'm, I'm working it right here. Yeah, if you get caught to the last part... Oh, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. That's going to get your juices flowing right there. <clears throat> All right, so we got two more left. How am I doing? Terrible on time. So long. Here's another one. This is so cool, man. It's that old style lock back marbles. It's heavy. It's huge. It's got a clevis on it and everything. But what you have is a basically a fold, folding buoy knife, you know. You got a lot of reach with this thing. I mean, it looks good with that jig bone and everything. They're not super expensive, but it's just nostalgia, you know. Got a... I wish they would have done this on both sides. This looks like a, a fuller, you know, until you look at it and realize that, it, yeah, it's a half fuller. And 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 watching that, how the Pakistanis made their fuller. Um, a true fuller is pressed in, all right. It's not it's not milled out and then polished, all right. And the reason the reason for that, there's nothing wrong with that other fuller that they do on the outlaw uh, buoy. It's just that uh, you're missing the benefit of a of a true fuller, which is it pushes the material in and it reinforces the blade and the spine, you know, while giving you that advantage of you know, does lighten it a little bit, but not as much as milling does. So, I mean, that's just one thing that, and this one will get your juices flowing too. Let's see, let's see. Uh, not as much. You got time to get away. Oh, but if you don't, <laughs> it's going to be a pinky or whatever you had in the way. Let's see how I would grip it. See, if you're closing a knife, a slip joint, any any knife. You want to get your fingers out of the path right away. You don't want to trust that that half stop's going to work. Maybe that KPO worked extra well and it went to the half stop and it didn't stop. <laughs> Decided to go extra. And then, uh, three finger Joe or Josephine, whatever your name is. All right, and the last two, actually the last two. It's the Buck 110 Auto. This one is the nostalgia of the Buck 110, but the f the new flipper, you know, type thing. No, it doesn't have a clip on the side. Yeah, it needs a case. But this one, this one really brings back a lot of memories uh, of a Buck knife. Other than the flipper, it's exactly like a 110. And this sucker is sharp. I didn't sharpen this or anything, but it is sharp. And I know these. I've used these. I carried a Buck 110 for decades, so I know I know what they're capable of. And I won't abuse this one like I did my other one. All right. Now, yes, those are that that one is expensive or anything, and that was another gift from Toby and family. But uh, that one. It's very nice. Every time I get it out and I use it or I carry it, it's very enjoyable. All right. And so finally, of course, K-1000 
King of the Buoys. I mean, King of the Buoys for me so far for everything. Fit, finish, handle. Um, not the handle material, but I, it's not bad. But it just fits my hand so well. There's things about this knife that just... It is. It's, you know, it's like a presentation piece, but it's one of those type of presentation pieces that, like, if you do that, you're... You're wasting the fun of of how good this thing feels in hand. If I could get another knife that was less expensive, I'll tell you that, if I find another Bowie knife that's under $100, even $100, but under $100, that feels as good in hand as this one does, then I'll let you know. But so far, right now, I just enjoy carrying this thing, throwing it looking at it i mean it is kind of a safe queen in that it wants to be polished all the time i mean you look at it and you're like eh, i'm gonna leave that dirt smudge on you take that but after a while you know i started carrying a clean cloth it's the only bowie knife i carry around where i'll carry a polishing cloth with me the rest of them you know i'll throw them in the dirt i'll wipe them off on my pants leg that's good enough for you i'll get you later you know if it's corrosion We'll wipe it down later, but for now, that's good. But with the Bowie knife, and you pull that, oh, oh, look, I got a smudge. I got a smudge on a blade. And this sheath, if you carry it in this sheath, sometimes I carry it in the Baron Sun Dangler, but it always leaves that kind of like oil streak, you know, back there. And some of it does, you know, scrape the blade and everything. But, yeah, this is going to be a user, you know, just because I enjoy it so much. And... I probably never would have been able to experience it if um, Toby and family hadn't s sent it to me because uh, I probably would have tried to sat be satisfied with the Sesco or something like that, you know. Maybe work up to the Gold Rush buoy because a lot of these knives that you see and you go, wow, that's pretty nice. Is he in a pass-around group or something? No, I just... Um, Toby just sends me these knives and says here you go and he doesn't want anything in return so i thank him often you know because it really it really does make a big difference when you're on a budget and you're just trying to express your joy for knives you know and um anyway there's my response to um Patty's potato peelers open tag. I could have gone on with more, but man, you see, even with these, it's taken almost 30 minutes. It's going to take me forever to upload this. But also, if you will notice, those of you that made it this far at the very end, YouTube has approved my membership thing. So when we start getting members, I'll start getting knives. And for example, let's say that uh, this was a knife that the members pick. Because I'm going to the first time I'm gonna I'm gonna see what's available, you know, from the funds and pick a knife. But after that, I'm gonna start doing things like put up a poll for members and ask, all right, with this amount of funds, how you know what type of knife would you buy? And I'd give them, you know, some examples. Way, you know, like A, B, C, D. You know, which of these knives would you would you get? Do like a poll and stuff like that. And then when the members get it you know, uh, pick the knife, I'll get it. And when the knife comes in, I'll review it, and then everybody will be able to get into the giveaway. But it'll have to be USA only for most of those. I will occasionally do one just for people outside the USA. It will have to be some kind of knife, you know, that wouldn't violate any law. But just to give you guys something... Or, you know, like swag, send out, um, you know, channel stickers and stuff like that with it. So there you go. Sorry for the length of this. A little channel update at the end there. But if you want to join, it's only going to be $1.99 a month. And uh, I'm going to try to improve that, you know, and offer more things through that. But for right now, you'll get like member shout outs, which for right now, no one's joined. So shout out to nobody. Hey, thanks for supporting the channel. I I don't mean 
I mean that as a joke, man, because I know a lot of people can't afford. So you don't have to do that. Like I said, you don't have to. You don't have to join or anything, but uh, it's just another thing I'm doing there for the channel. So there you go. Long ago, I should have shut up. Thank you for watching. Those are two or three of you that are left, and uh, have a nice day.